when you're different, I mean, like, you have different interests and you can have, like, different friends. Like, if you have different people together, then you have different qualities that you can share with each other. A lot of people like to be different because they don't have to fit in. If everybody was the same, then life would be boring. In a way, it's kind of bad because people make fun of you and stuff. Is your hair curly? Are your eyes blue? Are all the men in your family bald? The answers to all of these questions and so many more lie in the secrets of our genes. So, how do your genes fit? You know how sometimes you get a birthday present and it's the sweater you love in the color you hate? Well, usually you can exchange a sweater. It's a little different with the genetic birthday presents we get from our parents. This one's from mom. Wow, mom, you gave me your hair, blonde, curly. It's exactly what I want. Oh, thanks a lot, mom. I don't like my nose a lot and I get it from my dad, I think. Dad, you gave me your ears, those great big ones that stick out a lot. Um, thanks, Dad. Being short helps my gymnastics, but still, um, I would like to be taller, because then not a lot of people would make fun of me. I'm Christy Conway. Genes are among the most fascinating things that make up the entire human body. They determine so much about us. Genes can help us compete better in sports or become accomplished musicians. Genes can also dictate certain physical limitations. Genetic disorders that we're born with that make some of us different from others. Not less important or less talented, just different, like Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is an example of a genetic disorder that's caused by a change in one single gene on chromosome number 15. And that gene is something that all of us have, and when it functions normally, we all have a substance called fibrillin that's important in the development of our connective tissue. For people who inherit or have a change in that gene on chromosome 15, the result is that they have Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is a genetic disorder that affects the connective tissue of the body. Think of connective tissue as the glue that holds the body together. And since this glue is everywhere, Marfan syndrome can affect the entire body. But mostly it affects the eyes, the bones, and the heart. You know, there are certain bonuses that go along with Marfan syndrome. Because we're loose jointed, we can do lots of great goofy finger tricks. Here, try this one with me now. And if you can do it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have Marfan syndrome. The real problems that face most people with Marfan syndrome have to do with uh, things that might affect their cardiovascular system. That means their heart and their big vessels, their big blood vessels. And the reason we're concerned about that is because they have connective tissue inside them, their hollow tubes. And over time, with the stresses and strains of all that blood circulating around and getting pumped around to the body, there can be stretches and weaknesses created in their walls. People who have Marfan syndrome sometimes have trouble seeing because the lenses in their eyes become dislocated, or their bones are long and they're double-jointed. The heart can also be greatly affected by Marfan syndrome. The aorta may weaken, so it can't sustain much stress, which is why many people with Marfan syndrome have learned to modify their activity, like when they play sports. Well, I like to play tennis a lot and basketball. When you get tired, oh. that you have to like you have to sit out yeah, just like in basketball, you take back. and you keep make sure you don't like strain yourself too much when you're serving. You got to be careful not to like hurt yourself when you're serving too fast. He doesn't really have any problems with it. I think sometimes uh, other people have more problems than he does with it. I don't think he has any problem with it whatsoever. He's just accepted it as uh, perfectly normal, perfectly natural to him. Four score and seven years ago, well, it was actually a little longer than that. Which famous American, tall of spirit and tall of body, is believed to have had what we know of today as Marfan syndrome? You know, some pretty famous people, 
like French painter Toulouse-Lautrec, composers Paganini and Chopin, even artist Vincent van Gogh are suspected today of having been born with genetic disorders. And yet, they found a way to overcome their limitations and make the most of their abilities. All around you every day, many different people are living their lives with physically and mentally challenging conditions. And you know what? They too have learned to get the most out of life. My friends tell me I'm just like any normal kid. Just trying to have fun and trying to hang out. Trying to get new friends. Lindsay, Maria, uh, Angelo, Alvin, Kimberly. Kimberly right here. <laughs> it's the whole gang. She likes gardening. I have her, um, whatever I'm doing, if she's around me, I have her doing. If it's carpenter, her dad uh, is a mechanic. He would have her working with his cars. If I'm in the garden, she would be working with me in the garden. If I am cooking, she cooks. Kids that I know, they don't tease me anymore, but they used to. They used to call me um, chicken legs, skinny bones, everything. The only thing that's different about me is that I'm tall. Like, some people make fun of me, but I just say, like, I, I don't, sometimes like, it gets really annoying, so I just say, oh, stop, or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but uh, sometimes, I, mostly I just ignore it, and I try to ignore it. Like, I know the people that make fun of me aren't my friends. Uh, Jeff walked into my office, um, probably a little bit worried and scared because he's a very bright guy um, about what I was going to say and what I was going to do. And the nice thing about Jeff's case, I don't have to do anything painful or harmful. She said I had Marfan syndrome and that um, it's, uh, it's a uh, genetic thing that makes you, like, tall. And... Uh, she said that if you, you can, you'll probably be like seven foot two or something. And she said that you're, you're limited on your sports and everything. And she told me that I'm limited on like, I can't play, I can't play the whole game of basketball. I can't play hockey or lacrosse or football because like, I can't, uh, it's too much like contact and stuff. For the most part, this is uh, uh, not debilitating, at least at this level. And he should be treated uh, as you would any other child and he should be, uh, taught that, that there are differences between people. Uh, he has something that makes him different from other people, but he has to accept it, he has to live with it. This is something that he's going to have for the rest of his life. Having a good time, Jennifer? You having a good time? Stretch him out. You got to stretch your legs forward so you go faster. My dad told me to take my medicine so my heart doesn't get, my, the vessel of my heart doesn't get bigger and I won't have to have operation. Jennifer is a beautiful kid. She's very sensitive, very concerned with the needs of others. Um, she loves little kids, so I can probably, it might be projecting a bit, but I could see her uh, getting involved in teaching, uh, running her own day, daycare center, or something along those lines. But my mom says that no white perfect. Here's another one that a friend showed me. Do this one too. First of all, it's not contagious. You can't get it in school or from a doctor shot. It's a genetic disorder, which means you're born with it. In other words, it's in the genes. Not these genes, your biological genes. People with Marfan syndrome come in asking, how did this happen to me? And what are the chances that I could pass it on to my children? Sometimes they've already gone on to have children, and other times they're a young person themselves, and as they get older, face the decision whether or not to have children. Uh, most people with Marfan syndrome are interested in having children, um, and more often are asking the question, how might their children be affected with Marfan syndrome? And that's a little bit more difficult to predict. So Even though there's a 50-50 chance that an affected person could pass on that gene mutation to each child, how that child might be affected with Marfan syndrome uh, varies a bit. She's had many children, only one of whom seems to have inherited the gene, and that's your nephew who's affected with so Marfan syndrome. So even though syndrome. there's a 50-50 chance 
she still only had one child that was affected. Correct, because there's a 50-50 chance with every pregnancy, and chance doesn't remember. I think a lot of people understand that hair color and eye color are inherited. What that means is that we get genes from our mother and genes from our father that determine ultimately what the color of our eyes and our hair will be. Hair and eye color are a little bit more complicated because we think that there are many genes that um, actually determine what those colors are going to be. Um, but the mechanism of, of inheritance from parent to child is the same mechanism as inheriting a genetic disorder where a gene is passed on from parent to child. An example of that would be Marfan syndrome, where one parent carries a change in that gene and has passed it on to their child. In the last 10 years, doctors have learned a lot about Marfan syndrome. Not too long ago, a great Olympic volleyball player, Flo Hyman, and University of Maryland basketball player, Chris Patton, died as a result of Marfan syndrome because they didn't know they had it. Since then, scientists have made amazing discoveries about our genes and Marfan syndrome. So, it's much easier to detect and to live with. It's cool to, um, to know that you've got things, microscopic little building blocks in you that like, make up who you are. It's kind of it's neat. It's easy to trace this famous American because he had a famous address, the Gettysburg Address. Just because a person has a physically challenging genetic disorder, there's still no limitation to that person's potential. Here's someone who has learned to combine her humor and her talents with especially inspiring results. The workshops and presentations that I do are about humor, creativity, and chronic illness. And I, the first one was put together for my own New York Marfan Syndrome support group with no intention of it necessarily going any further. but it has gone further, just sort of spontaneously. Other groups heard about it, and now I've traveled all over the country uh, talking to both genetic disorder and chronic illness organizations, as well as to medical professionals. My job, as I see it, is to find the way to take those genes that I've been handed and make myself a great life. People are always telling me that you should look at like what you can do and not what you can't do, because um, if you look at what you can't do, it can be like really frustrating and you get really frustrated that you can't do that. But if you look at what you can do, then you're looking at something that you can accomplish and something that you, not, rather than something that you can. I don't even know if there is anything that I would really change about myself because I like who I am and mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it's nice being like my parents and I like, I like being like who I am right now and everything. If you haven't guessed already, Abraham Lincoln is our famous mystery American who is suspected of having had Marfan syndrome. How do we know? Well, we don't for sure, but believe it or not, blood samples, hair samples, and bone samples of President Lincoln still exist at the National Museum of Health and Medicine and are awaiting testing. Yuck! Now I don't really think I'd change anything like before I wanted to, but like not now. If there was one thing I could change, it would definitely be my teeth. I think I inherited um, my temper from my dad, and I would like, want to be more easygoing. When it comes down to how people live every day with genetic disorders, it's not about disability, it's about ability. It's about understanding what your strengths are and how to make the most of them. It's about learning how to make your genes fit best. Oh.